It's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, and the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. For deep down laughs and listening enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for deep down coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. With extra flavor in the blend because of choice Latin American coffees, skillfully combined. Extra flavor in the cup because Radiant Roast develops the full flavor of every coffee bean. And the result is that today more people buy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. You know, folks, the George Burnses are so happily married that a newspaper has chosen them for the finals in its search to pick Hollywood's happiest Mr. and Mrs. We find Gracie now talking to a woman from the newspaper. And so, Mrs. Burns, our search for Hollywood's ideal husband and wife has narrowed down to you and one other couple. Well, this is a wonderful surprise, Miss Ettinger. But really, George and I aren't so much. We're just plain, ordinary, everyday, delightful people. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Burns, since you're so happily married, perhaps you'll have some advice to pass along to young girls in the matter of choosing the right husband. Yes, I have. When I was very young, I made up my mind that I would find the perfect man. Man with personality, looks, brains, talent, and charm. I searched for three years before I finally married George Burns. Then your advice to young girls would be... Do just what I did. Give up the hope for search and marry the man you love. <laughs> and uh, what is your recipe for staying happily married? Well, personally, I try to observe the mistakes that other wives make and avoid making those mistakes myself. What kind of mistake? Oh, now, for example, I've seen women ask their husbands for $10 to pay an installment on the radio and then take that money and buy a hat with it. How true. Well, if my husband gives me $10 to pay a radio installment, I pay the radio installment. If I need a hat, I use the rent money. (laughs) I see. I can get a much better hat that way. I understand how using the rent money gets you a better hat. But does that make your husband happy? Oh, yes, he loves to move. (laughs) Well, Mrs. Burns, isn't it difficult to maintain a career and a home at the same time? I mean, isn't it drudgery to come home from the studio and have to cook dinner? Miss Ettinger, if you were cooking for the one you love, would you call it drudgery? (laughs) No, I guess I wouldn't. Well, neither does George. (laughs) You mean your husband does the cooking? Oh, now, please don't get the idea that George cooks all the meals. He doesn't. Oh, I see. Twice a week we eat out. I must confess that your methods for maintaining a happy marriage are a little unorthodox. However, if you can prove to me that you and your husband are happier than the Galens, you'll win the contest. The Galens? They're the other couple in the finals. I'm on my way to observe their home life now. At one o'clock, I shall return to observe you and Mr. Burns. Well, I'm sure you'll find us the happiest couple in Hollywood. Why, the minute we wake up in the morning, we have a good hearty laugh. Well, what do you laugh about? Oh, I laugh at my husband's long, woolly underwear. Well, why does he laugh? Oh, it tickles him, too. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. I shall see you at one. Goodbye, Miss Ettinger. Oh, George, George! Oh, wait a minute. I'd better not tell George about this. If he knows the woman is watching us, he'll be self-conscious and won't crack a smile. Oh, Did you what? call me, dear? Oh, well, uh, yes, darling. Um, dear, would you say that we're happily married? Of course we are. We've been happily married for 11 years. Oh, 11 years. It's pretty good for this town, isn't it? <laughs> you bet. Remember when we'd been married two days, they called us the grand old couple of Hollywood? <laughs> That's right. Our marriage has been successful because we realize that married people have to give up certain things. Remember how I asked you to give up betting on the races? Yeah, and I gave it up. You certainly did. And remember how you asked me to stop buying so many hats? Yep. You gave that up, too. (laughs) I 
certainly did. Yes, I, you're a wonderful husband, George. I was lucky to get you. In fact, I, I guess I'm one person who was lucky at cards and lucky in love, too. Really? Yes. Whether it was poker or marriage, I got the pot. <laughs> Thanks, kid. Oh, oh, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I meant that you're a prize, not that you have a pot. I say. I love you, darling, and I'd love you just as much if you didn't have one. <laughs> Thanks again. Do you uh, do you love me as much as I love you? Of course I do. Well, I'd like to hear you say, "Darling, I love you." Okay, darling, well, I. Well, like to hear those things, you know. <laughs> All right, darling, you can't I can't just take them for granted. <laughs> okay. I want to hear you say that you love me, <laughs> darling. Just four little words. Darling. But it means so much to us, too. <laughs> Darling. Yes, <Dana> Matthews. <laughs> Gracie. Yes? Darling, I love you. Ah, uh, now, you see, that wasn't hard, was it? <laughs> Say it again. Darling. Well, I like to hear those things, you know. I'll try it again tomorrow. Yes. Oh, good morning, folks. Oh, good morning, Meredith. Meredith, do you realize that George and I have been happily married for 11 years now? 11 years? Mm -hmm. Gosh, have you been married that long, Gracie? Yes, I have, Meredith. 11 years. Half my life. <laughs> Gracie, you were not 11 when you married me. If you, if you were under 18, you would have needed your mother's consent. And believe me, that we didn't have. <laughs> Did your mother dislike George, Gracie? Well, I wouldn't say she disliked him. I'd say she sort of despised him. <laughs> the feeling was mutual. <laughs> you, you know that place in the wedding ceremony where the man says, if anyone can show cause why these two should not be married, let him speak now? Yes. Well, Mama got up and filibustered. <laughs> uh, but we've been very, very happy, Meredith. Why don't you get married? Me? <laughs> Oh, I guess I will someday, if the right girl ever proposes to me. <laughs> it's up to you to do the proposing. Uh, haven't you ever been in love? Oh, yes, George. I had quite a case on a girl once. She played the harp in my orchestra. Fine musician. You liked her, huh? Very much. Her cadenzas were remarkable. <laughs> well, I guess there's nothing like a girl with remarkable cadenzas. Well, what Unless one that you? sings baritone. <laughs> Hmm? What happened with you and this girl? Well, we used to get in my coupe and drive up on Lookout Mountain. And, well, if I may use an overworked expression, we made beautiful music together. Oh? Well, why did you break up? It just got to be too much work getting that harp in and out of the coupe. <laughs> Meredith, you're a ball of fire. Look, why didn't you drive up on Lookout Mountain without the harp? That was all she could play. Oh, <laughs> should find the girl and propose. To show you how wonderful married life is, look at George and me. Eleven years without a single quarrel. Well, we had one little quarrel once didn't amount to anything. No, I don't believe we've ever quarreled, dear. Well, I think we have, darling. A little no, tiny quarrel. No, precious, we haven't. But well, I remember it was George, we have never quarreled. <laughs> but I remember you fussing at me. I have about... never raised my voice to you, but never. Well, answer me, have I? Well, it... Well, don't you dare talk back to me. <laughs> talk back to you if I want to. Oh, won't. no, you won't. Now apologize. All right, I apologize. <laughs> and then I was right. You were right, you were right. Oh, you see, Meredith, I was right. Eleven right. years without a, a single, single quarrel. quarrel. That's, <laughs> That's remarkable. Uh, come in. Hi, Burnses. Well, hello, Meredith. Hi, Bill. How are you? What's well, new? congratulations are in order, Bill. George and I have stayed happily married in Hollywood for 11 years. Well, congratulations, Thanks. Gracie. 11 years. Mm -hmm. Gracie, let me look at you. You know, it just doesn't seem possible that you've been married that long. And George, let me look at you. <laughs> Only 11 years, huh? <laughs> Never mind, comedian. You're another guy who ought to be thinking seriously of marriage. Who, me? Yeah, he's yeah. right, Bill. You and Meredith should get married. <laughs> you think we'd be happy? <laughs> you know what she meant. Get yourselves wives. 
Marriage is the healthy, happy, happy state of living. Happy, happy, happy. It's really happy. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be happy. <laughs> yeah. Now, suppose Anthony never married Cleopatra. Mm-hmm. Suppose Romeo had never married Juliet. They didn't. Uh, you see? And they're all dead. <laughs> Gracie, you're wasting your time. Marriage just doesn't appeal to me. Oh, but, Bill, you're so popular. Well, you could marry dozens of girls. Really? Dozens? It's beginning to appeal to me. (laughs) Take it from me, Bill. You'll find one wife makes plenty to support. Well, I guess you're right, George. One wife certainly makes plenty to support you. (laughs) I'm going in the den and read the paper. See you later, comic. (laughs) Okay, straight man. Bill, now you've upset him. If he isn't happy by one o'clock, we'll lose the contest. What contest? Well, George doesn't know it, but we're in the finals of Hollywood's Happy Marriage Contest. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Gracie. I didn't know. Well, I've just got to get him in a gay mood by one o'clock. Oh, I know. I'll go in and entertain him. Excuse me, Bill. George? What? Want to see a card trick? No. (laughs) Well, wash my hands very carefully. Now, now you see the ace of spades. Now you don't. Now the ace of spades. Now you don't. Now you see the ace of spades. Wait a minute. Now you don't. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it. I never did see the ace of spades. <laughs> oh, well, I haven't learned how to do it with the cards yet. <laughs> this is great. This is great. Wasn't trip. that an amusing trick? Are you happy? No, I'm not happy. Oh. Well, here's a joke I heard on the bus yesterday. A man came home and found his wife sitting in the bathtub with no water in it. So he said, honey, there's no water in the tub. And she said, I know it. That's the joke you heard on the bus? Uh Uh-huh. That's the whole joke? Well, George, you're not laughing. Is that the entire joke? Well, there must have been more, but I had to get off at third for my... Gracie. Are you happy? No, I'm not happy. Oh, George, you're very difficult. I'll, I'll try another card trick. Think of a card. Oh, no, no. Hey, she's a- it's Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. <laughs> you rehearse that tune you're playing, I thought what a lot of pleasure it's bound to give many people. Well, Bill, On the Oregon Trail is not only pleasant listening, but it must recall for a great many families legends and stories of an important part of our early American scene. Yes, for tales have been passed from generation to generation about how the ox teams plotted through that country of scenic wonder. As you know, you can follow that trail today. If you do, you'll touch places that bear wonderful names. Listen to some of them. Independence Rock, Devil's Gate, Sweetwater River, Wind River Mountains, the Valley of the Bear. Names significant to our American scene. And I can't help thinking, too, that in so many homes today, there's another name that's become a part of our American way of life. Maxwell House, a coffee of true distinction. For in this nation of coffee lovers, Maxwell House is bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand. You see, Maxwell House experts skillfully blend these choice Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other choice Latin American coffees for vigor... And book 
Bucaramanga's for full body. The result is coffee so full-flavored and richly delicious that north, east, south, and west, the name Maxwell House is synonymous with the phrase, good to the last drop. Oh, Meredith, George and I will never win the happy marriage contest. Look at the time, 12.30. That woman will be here at 1 o'clock. Yeah, I know it. And George still isn't happy. When she sees him, the Galens are bound to get the award. Oh, I sure wish we could think of some way to cheer him up. Well, think, Meredith, think. I'm thinking. What was George doing the last time you saw him really happy and enjoying himself? Well, let me see. I guess he was watching that burlesque show he took me to. <laughs> No, I'm afraid I couldn't do that. The house is too cold. What else does George like to do? Well, he loves to discuss politics. He's always... Politics, of course. A good, intelligent political discussion will make him happy. Hey, excuse me, Meredith. George? Yes, dear? How do you feel about Coolidge? <laughs> Coolidge. Do you think he'll be elected president this year? Uh, don't think he's got a chance. Uh, uh, how about William Jennings Bryan? Well, he's got as good a chance as Coolidge. Uh, <laughs> just hope a Republican doesn't get in again. Time the Democrats had a chance. Yes, they've really been pushed around. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, how do you feel about South America? How do you feel about it? I say, leave it where it is. <laughs> Yeah, let's not move it. It's heavy. <laughs> now, um, take inflation. How about that? Inflation? Yeah. You tell me. Well, I don't think we should keep it a secret just because we invented it first. <laughs> we should share it with all the United Nations. That's the spirit. Yeah. And now, now let's take Congress. The meeting, you know. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. I got a meeting. Yes. Some people want a long Congress and some people want a short Congress. And you? Well, a lot of people are against the short Congress, but I say if Mr. LaGuardia wants to run, his size shouldn't keep him out. <laughs> Fair enough. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, take the poll tax. I'm against it. You are? Oh, oh yes. That's interesting. We're all Americans. Why should people pay a special tax because they came from Poland? <laughs> Good idea. Yes. Now, what shall I take next? A powder, right out that door. <laughs> this, uh, talk about politics hasn't made you happy? No. Why not? I'm worried about Coolidge's chances. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Now, run along and let me brood about it. Oh, yes, dear. Oh, poor Cal. <laughs> well, did it make him happy, Gracie? No, and I can't understand it. He hangs on Gabriel Heater's every word, and I'm much more attractive. Oh, hey, excuse me, Meredith. Good day, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Postman. I detect a note of sadness in your voice, and you're usually gay and carefree like me. Well, I have a problem. My husband is unhappy, and we're ended in the happy marriage contest. Oh, is there a happy marriage contest? Yeah, didn't you and your wife enter? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I guess your marriage would never win a prize. Not unless I entered my wife in the golden gloves. <laughs> Does she still strike you? Mrs. Burns, 20 years ago, I asked for her hand, and she's been giving it to me ever since. <laughs> well, into each life, some rain must fall. Yes, but my wife shouldn't happen even in California. <laughs> I guess you and I are both married to Cloudburst. Oh, no. George isn't that bad. He's just an occasional drip. <laughs> well, compared to me, your husband should be as happy as a lark. Mm, say, that's an idea. Maybe if you tell George how miserable you are, he'll see how much reason he has to be happy. Bring him on. I'll fill his little heart with joy. <laughs>
And then my wife hit me with the electric iron, tied my hands and feet, and flung me down the basement where I lay for four days. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. Well, George, how do you feel now? Are you happy? Happy? How can I be happy when that poor little man is so miserable? But, dear... He, he made me feel terrible. I'm going in a den. <laughs> again and make them happy. Yeah, and that woman will be here in 15 minutes. Yeah, let's see now. I know how Clara Bagley made her husband happy recently, but I wouldn't have time for that. What did she do? She had a baby. <laughs> no, I guess that's impractical. It would be a lot easier to make George happy if he wasn't the worrying type. Meredith, I believe you've got it. He'll be much happier if I do all the worrying for both of us. He sure ought to be. Well, I'll stop his worries right now. George? What? From now on, I don't want you to do any worrying. Well, fine. I'll do it for both of us. Good. So, don't worry about the postman. Don't worry about your electric razor. Don't worry about... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. About... Wait a minute. What, uh, what happened to my electric razor? Oh, it got kind of clogged up when I peeled the carrots with it. <laughs> you peeled carrots with my electric razor? Don't the worry new one about... Don't that I just worry got? about... Don't worry. From now on, I'm worrying about everything. The fender on the car, too. Fender on the car. Yeah, but I, I sort of ran into the rear end of Mr. Connor's milk truck. Oh, no. Yeah, but don't you worry about it. I'm handling all the worrying. Now, you happy? No, I'm not happy. Still brooding about Coolidge, Yeah, huh? about Coolidge. Now, get out of here. <laughs> well, Meredith, that... Oh, hello, Bill. Hi, Gracie. I came back to see if you'd won the happy marriage contest. Well, not yet, and we haven't a chance unless George cheers up. Oh, the little man is still unhappy, oh, huh? Oh, Bill, you ought to see him. He doesn't look like himself. And you're complaining? <laughs> <laughs> what can I do? That woman will be here to observe us in five minutes. Well, you just leave him to me, Gracie. I've got a letter here that ought to do the trick. Oh, good, Bill. He's right in there in the den. Hello, George, old man. Hello, Bill. <laughs> Oh, come on, George. Cheer up. Wait till you hear this letter from the sponsor. Wait till you hear the nice thing he said about you. About me? Mm-hmm. From the sponsor? Yeah. Well, read it, Bill. What does he say? Well, I'll read some excerpts, huh? Good, good. Now, get this. <clears throat> the Maxwell House coffee people are proud and happy to have as their star a man whose charm and talent are on a par with the quality of their product. Wow. Now, that really means something, sure. because Maxwell House coffee is tops. I know. Read some more. It's appetizing, rich, full-bodied, and mellow. Read uh, the letter. Read some more. Maxwell House is coffee at its full-flavored best. Good to the last drop. Read some That's more. That's why more people <laughs> buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. The letter, Bill. What else does the sponsor say? Well, now, get this closing. Yes. And it is our fervent hope that this talented and brilliant man will still be with us five, ten, or even twenty years from now. Boy. Because it has indeed been a pleasure to sponsor radio's brightest personality, Bill Goodwin. <laughs> Bill Goodwin. Yes. Let me see where it says that. Right here. <laughs> I thought you said the sponsor said something nice about me. Well, I was coming to that, George. P.S. Tell Gracie's husband we liked his Christmas card. <laughs> well, that's nice. Wasn't that a nice thing for him to say? Aren't you thrilled? I'm a mass of quivering goose flesh. <laughs> well, then don't act so miserable. Smile. Be happy. What have I got to be happy about? What have you got? Well, look at you. You've got a... Well, you've got a... Boy, you've got a right to be miserable. <laughs> Dick, Bill, did huh? you fix it? Is he any happier? Well, I'm afraid not, Gracie. We were going along fine till the subject of George Burns came up. Now we're both depressed. I'm sorry. <laughs> He was a big help. We've got two minutes to go. What can we do, Meredith? You know, Gracie, I might be able to make George happy. Yeah, how? Well, I'm a musician, and music half charms. It half? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say sure. Suppose I take my flute in there and play him a solo. Oh, wonderful. Shall I play him something by Chopin or something by Humperdinck? <laughs> Oh, Humperdinck, by all means. The man who was willing to live with that name must have been happy. <laughs> Chopin sounds awfully pretty on a flute. Oh, play Humperdinck. Okay, Gracie. Humperdinck it is. <laughs> you wait right here. Well, what do you want? Ouch! Oh, Meredith! Meredith, what happened? 
I knew I should have played Chopin. <laughs> it's too late now. Here comes the woman up the walk. Well, maybe I can block this thing through if she doesn't see George. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Mrs. Bird. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Is uh, this your husband? Oh, no, no. My husband, my happy husband is in bed. In bed? Yes, he's so happy he laughed himself sick. <laughs> oh, all we do around here is just laugh, laugh, laugh. Well, let's have the award, huh? <laughs> Can't I have any peace in this house? Stop all this cackling. Now, quiet. So this is Laughing Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this old bat? <laughs> Newspaper, here's the award for being the happiest couple in Hollywood. Are you, you giving it to us? I've got to. But I, I thought you'd give it to the Galens. I'm not going to chase him to Reno just for that. Goodbye. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Goodwin. Until next Thursday, then, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Gracie, I'm sorry I lost my temper. I guess we really are the happiest couple in Hollywood. Well, sure we are. And that's because you're the boss and I do whatever you say. Oh, I'm not the boss. Oh, yes, you are, dear. Oh, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, really, I'm... George, the... I'm running this house, and when I say you're the boss, you're the boss. <laughs> I lost my head. Just call me bossy. Oh, that's good. Good night. <laughs> Stay tuned to this station because Dinah Shore's open house is coming on in just a second. Dinah's special guest tonight is Jack Carson. Oh, goody, goody, jello pudding tonight. It tastes like grandma's, only more so. You ain't kidding, that's right. And, and just, just as jello, jello, six delicious locked in flavors can't be beaten. So the proof of jello pudding's in the eating. The jello twins are hard to find, but keep on looking in your store. When sugar shortages are over, there'll be more. Just a taste of Jell-O pudding or a Jell-O and you know It's the one and only J-E-L-L-O This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.